session myself dr annapurna it gives me a great pleasure to extend to you a very warm welcome on behalf of college of pharmacy mother teresa post graduate and research institute of health sciences who has clapped all of us for the global pharma e learning webcast series international webinar 2 on the topic nature inspired sugar based multifunctional drug delivery carriers and the resource person is dr murli kumar swami senior research technician israel institute of technology israel before we get started i take this opportunity to thank all the delegates who had attended our first webinar on july 10 on the topic the fact what by dr mohammad rafiullah from king saud university and made the event a grand success thank you again now i request professor dr v gopal principal and head academic registrar department of pharmacology college of pharmacy to welcome the participants and the resource person thank you very much pranams and happy afternoon on behalf of our dean and the entire family of mother teresa post graduate and research institute of health sciences a government of puducherry institution extend a warm welcome to the resource person of today's international webinar 2 dr murali kumar aswami thank you very much sir for your august presence and we welcome you sir for this international webinar we express our gratitude for having uh, shared your valuable time and going to share your valuable experience uh, for the benefit of our students your presence has made this unlock 2.0 in india very fruitful we are looking forward for a very uh, fruitful learning experience we once again thank you very much sir i take this opportunity to welcome all the active participants the last webinar that was a mega success because of the active participants i once again thank the participants for your uh, enthusiasm i thank you for your involvement i thank you for your feedback and i thank you for your august presence i welcome you again i take this pleasure in welcoming all the faculty of the college of pharmacy and the faculty of mother teresa post graduate and research institute of health sciences for their active involvement at this juncture Uh, it gives me happiness to thank uh, the technical team consisting of dr selva kumari dr annapurna dr norul adam mr sudhir and mr dinesh thank you very much for your hard work i thank uh, the entire uh, team behind this uh, webinar i welcome all the participants one and all thank you thank you sir science is not learning of facts but training the mind to think now i request dr e selo kumari assistant professor department of mm. pharmacy to introduce the speaker good morning one and all i take this opportunity to introduce today's speaker dr murali kumar aswami currently working as senior researcher technion israel institute of technology israel coming to his academic path Sir completed his B form in the year 2005 and M form in the year 2008 from the Tamil Nadu Dr. M. J. R. Medical University, Chennai. In the year 2008, he joined as lecturer in C. L. Bayamatha College of Pharmacy, Chennai. Coming to his international path in his professional career, in 2010 he received a research grant that allowed him to work with the research group of Nano Biotechnology and Bio Analysis Group, University of Rovira, Virchili. Tarragona, Spain, as a research fellow and conducted a study in the optimization of separation and isolation of circulating cell-free cycle DNA for non-invasive prenatal diagnosis. This work led him to move Laboratory of Cellular and Developmental Neurobiology, Institute of Experimental Medicine, Hungarian Academy of Sciences, where he has joined the far larger multidisciplinary. European Commission SP7 Marie Curie Consortium of Nanotools and has interdisciplinary doctoral thesis investigated on the interaction of nanoparticles with neural stem and tissue type cells. As a Marie Curie early stage researcher, he visited and made short time research across across globe at Norway, Germany, Spain, Ireland, and Belgium. In 2015, he obtained 
doctorate in theoretical medicine from doctoral school of samalwais university budapest hungary since completing his phd he spent at the magneto optical spectroscopy laboratory budapest university of technology and economics working on the magneto optical diagnosis of malaria he then moved back to india and then at the center of nano biotechnology not sorry nanotechnology indian institute of technology roor k as a junior faculty post doctoral fellow in january 2017 he joined in technion israel institute of technology funded by the national network of excellence in neuroscience ranked from the israel's largest teva pharmaceuticals and planning and budgeting committee fellowship from the israel council for higher education he holds several prestigious fellowships including mary curie and national institute of health working in multidisciplinary aspect and he has joined and gained valuable experience in testing biological responses to nanoparticles and nanomaterials he is an author of over 30 publications and an inventor of patents in the year 2020 dr murali received european union interact grant to explore his trans galactic approaches on diagnosis and the treatment of pediatric brain tumor in november 2019 he moved to the international iberian nanotechnology laboratory located in portugal to establish his senior researcher position the underpinning focus of dr murali's present research is creating personalized solutions that utilize nanoscale technologies to enable a range of therapeutics for neurodegenerative diseases and brain cancer his interests are highly disciplinary involving collaboration with local and international colleagues at present he combines his globe trotting scientific adventures and trans galactic ideas to initiate the path in high reward entrepreneurship with this very brief introduction i would like to hand over the mic to dr anapurna ma'am thank you thank you ma'am before we get started just a few instructions if you have any questions during the presentation please type it in the chat box we'll bring them up after the presentation the feedback link will be attached in the youtube chat box towards the end of session now i request the speaker dr murli kumar swami sir to take on the session yeah thank you ma'am thank you so much can you hear me can you able to see my screen yes sir yes sir it's audible oh. but the okay, uh, screen is not still coming sir so screen okay. so this sir uh, you plus uh, stop yeah, uh, yeah. presenting yeah thank you welcome I hope now it will be okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone. All the participants. Uh, well, first of all, uh, let me thank um, uh, Dr. Selva Kumari, ma'am, for uh, for her kind invitation. Um, also, Dr. Anupama, ma'am. Um, hello. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, just moments. But sometimes internet is choppy. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm. Okay. Yeah, can you able to see? Yeah. But sometimes the internet is choppy. You know, it's. it's... that's why I, I okay yeah okay so um thank you thank you so much um first of all i i I'd like to thank uh, dr salu kumari ma'am for for her kind invitation um also i i thank uh, dr anapurna ma'am for uh, for uh, for her introduction um also i i thank principal sir dr gopal sir for uh, for uh, for her, uh, for, her, for his invitation um so i'm i'm really so privileged to give a talk uh, at at the, the mother terra science of uh, higher education um and sciences college of pharmacy 
um so it is one of the prestigious institute at the same time a lot of experienced faculties are working in this institute as far as i know and so i i i i'm so privileged uh, to give a talk in this i mean to give a virtual talk in this institute and today what i'm going to do is today i'm going to talk about nature inspired uh, sugar based multifunctional drug delivery carriers um um so the the, the main um inspiration is you know take it like a natural materials and use as a multifunction like different for different applications uh, drug delivery carriers and this is a snapshot of my presentation first i'm going to talk about um from nature to nurture like how nature is useful and also the what are the problems actually because why we are using natural materials and what is the pharmaceutical problem real problems or how pharmaceutical research and development is is challenges uh, and also uh, nano approaches like nanotechnology how nanotechnology to solve the problems of drugs actually the real pharmaceutical drugs and and next i'm going to talk about the glucose transport resistance cancer because i'm i'm as i mentioned like a multifunctional so my my talk about uh some parts about cancer and some parts about neurological disorders actually so i'm also going to talk about neurological disorders and biological barriers and sugar nano carriers uh how sugar carriers is fueling the drug delivery to the brain so this these are the snapshot of the presentation so as i mentioned like nature is you know nature is useful in uh, for the human being in so many ways actually uh, that's why we used to say like a nature is god uh so for example if you see the first picture like it's jacko feet um Uh, is is this uh, nano topography of jacofit is inspired uh, uh, scientists to create a tissue adhesives actually because existing existing tissue adhesives are um, it it produce a kind of you know inflammations and it's not like very good adhesions actually but this jacofit has it's inspired the researchers to make a very good tissue adhesives and in in micro diagrams for example as you can see in this uh the blue uh tube states actually this this tube is nothing but it's obtained from the the plant crystals actually the calcium oxalate crystals and they 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 manufactured like a next generation um, um like drug delivery um uh, robots uh, for example robots micro robots also it's a single cell surgery and drug release uh, using the plant based uh, like a biogenic materials so these are like a next generation drug delivery materials and uh, you know there is a small animal uh it's like a more humble animal it's a percubin actually so it's it's inspired uh, researchers to make a surgical staple actually for example sutures uh, when you're making a sutures the needles are like you know you need to give a lot of pressure actually but what researchers they uh, they take inspiration from this animal and they they made like a uh, less pressure uh, sutures materials like suture inject uh, injectable materials and also you can consider like a lotus leaf actually that's another um inspiration for the researchers um uh, based on this lotus leaf uh, researchers which plan on nanotechnology based they created um hydrophobic uh, paints uh, you know that that that's that's a kind of self cleaning materials and even the car glass actually they they made it like a hydrophobic so that you know you do not need a wipers to 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 clean it um, also silk fiber fibrin um it's it's a biogenic origin actually it's used in um, this particular proteins is used in a um, multiple application like a drug delivery and also tissue engineering application so nature is helpful in so many ways actually not only this you know there are biogenic excipients for example gelatin is a hydrolyzed form of collagen also obtained from the nature actually and also elastin is a kind of protein actually is in use in many applications like tissue engineering and kind of application uh, of course is a green tea yes epigallocatechins um, uh, also uh useful in so many ways um um it's antioxidant and etc etc a lot of applications actually i i i mentioned very few because i if if i want to mention you know it's like a it's a, like another chapter i need to i need to discuss and also lecithin actually is in uh, is in oleogel drug delivery and all and more famous chitosan you know it's also biogenic origin actually it's useful in in uh, these all materials they are using in a drug delivery vaccine delivery antibacterial agent and more importantly like a tissue engineering like a regenerative medicine that's a booming area of research actually so um, not only in drug delivery we also can apply in tissue engineering the all the natural materials so wide applications and um i i i have to mention this because um um i i know natural materials has got some kind of attention actually but since 2015 uh, it got like more attention because Uh, because of professor yu yu chu and professor satoshi omura and professor william campbell they they received the nobel prize um for the discovery of biogenic antiparasitic drugs actually they uh, they discovered uh, the drugs from the different origins like from bacteria from the natural origin like a plants you know, automation you know like anti malarial 
uh, and also soil bacteria they utilize as antimicrobial properties and ivermec ivermectin is actually the ivermectin it's, it's like a is anti parasitic drugs is useful in human and also veterinary a lot of veterinary applications even uh, as you know recently got attention for the, for the covid 19 treatment also so uh, from since from 2015 so so it it got like much attention particularly the natural origins uh, materials and biogenic materials and in our research um, uh, we we utilize a, like a galactomannan as a targeting block to treat um, like to target the cancer as well as uh, neurological diseases actually mm-hmm. what is galactomannan galactomannan is like a kind of gum it's a locust bean gum it's a natural biopolymer extracted from the seeds of karok tree as you can see here um it's um, uh, the, the main advantage is like you know is a biodegradable low to- toxicity and low cost actually that's a very important for, for example when you because uh, india like countries like developing countries even the de- developed countries uh, they they are uh, they are looking for the low cost materials actually so this is the low cost is so uh, this is uh, like a very important uh, parameters and also this materials are like galactomannan and used in food cosmetic and pharmaceutical industries in 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 different different categories applications and um, this is structure of the the uh, the the, the galactomannan you can you can see like a, one side is a mannan and another side is a galactose so that's why it's called as galactomannan and I, i should talk about the the major challenges in pharmaceutical r and d um you know by pharmaceutical classification as pharmacist you, you you must know by pharmaceutical classification system like class 1 2 3 4 The sad truth uh, is a class 2 and 4 the most of the drugs particularly the 50% of approved drugs and 70% of novel drugs it falls on this particular two category which means that it uh, these drugs are poor somehow has a um, poor acute solubility and permeability of drugs actually so in a, for example if you want to treat many diseases like it should cross the biological barriers so you know human being has uh, as a uh, human body has a lot of barriers so biological barriers so it should cross So in order to cross, you know, the drug should have like a good permeability, good solubility. So where the nanotechnology platforms plays a very important role to overcome this this uh, uh, issues, like major issues. Mm, how the ma- micro nanotechnology to overcome biopharmaceutical drawbacks? So, as you know, we are a pharmacist, and we know the challenges in drug delivery, like you know, the off-target accumulation. For example, cancer. I can say like a cancer is a big example. Um, the existing drugs, conventional drugs, um, is not like a target specific or cell specific. and also drug resistance um it, i think um uh, it's, it's a next i'm sure the next pandemic is going to start from the drug resistance so as a sci- scientific community i'm insisting um um to uh, to uh, work on this drug resistance multi drug resistance and back um, antibacterial resistance that's very important actually to to overcome the challenges and also poor bioavailability it's um, it's uh, one of the existing ones and a bio- and physiochemical instability actually because in body as you know different um, ionic strength and different ph different biomolecules proteins and dnas and extra etc so drug molecules most of the drug molecules is not stable in in inside our body for example uh, you know there are different categories of nanocarriers actually for example you can ca- you can categorize um, on a surface chemistry basis like um, the positive and and negative and also there are composition space like a diff- different materials silica polymeric materials actually that, that's the main main focus of our, our current talk and our research actually there are a lot of natural materials uh, um, we can we can isolate the polymers from the lot of natural materials and liposomes is the most successful story from from nanotechnology and viruses like non virulent viruses iron oxide and dentimers you know there are many many, many uh, the particle composition used as a drug delivery vehicle and also the different geometries actually for example triangles rods cubes and spheres actually used as the drug delivery vehicles in many cases and targeting ligands particularly this this got much, much attention uh, they are using a different antibodies proteins or peptides and nucleic acids small molecules polymers for, for the targeting drug, drug delivery so these are the drug delivery different types of drug delivery but but problem is you know systemic toxicity but nanotoxicology is a big big issue actually that's the reason Uh, most of the researches we are we, we are using a polymeric materials particularly the polymers from the natural origin actually that, that's 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 what i'm emphasizing at this at this presentation also the polymeric nanoparticles so why polymeric nanoparticles for the drug delivery you know polymeric nanoparticles is, is a sub micron size is 1 to 100 nanometers and is a colloidal particles and you can able to encapsulate any sort of drug drug molecules like a small molecules or even the macro molecules actually within the polymer matrix that's a big advantage of polymers so that um, there are specific advantages of uh, nano nanoparticles at the drug carriers for example the simple production process 
uh, and also, also scale up like the mass production is much more easy in in polymeric nanoparticles and physical stability actually i, I mentioned you know as, uh, as most of the conventional drugs has, has uh, physical instability but when you are using a polymeric nanoparticle when you are encapsulating drug materials with the polymers uh, it, it improves the stability in, in biological fluids and uh, and also improve the stability of encapsulated drugs against enzymatic degradation and possibility of sustained drug release and higher intracellular uptake compared to microparticles so these are the advantage of nanoparticles actually and also another case when in nano it's a, it's a surface a nano has a more active surface actually so you can modify with any sort of materials like a targeting agents uh, uh, using an antibody as you can see in the picture ligand peptides cationic molecules so that site specific like a target specific is, is much more easier and self assembly amphiphilic co um, block copolymers um, and most of the you know we utilize like a natural and synthetic materials to prepare the amphiphilic block copolymers so actually why is amphiphilic, amphiphilic because you know amphiphilic it contains like a soluble materials like hydrophilic and hydrophobic cause actually you can able to uh, it's a self assembly in nature in an in, in aqueous environment you can you can able to um, create like a different geometries like a cylindrical and also in this and the spherical um, the the main important thing is the hydrophobic core it's it's hide from the the aqueous uh, aqueous environment so that you can um, when when you want to encapsulate the drug the, the drug can um, go and bind with the hydrophobic core and so that you can prevent the drug uh, um, as, uh, like you know you, uh, you can improve the sustained release actually by this way and uh, as you know like the famous is uh, the critical mesel concentration at the at the which concentration is um, the mesel is formation is, is Critical mass concentration. So, uh, this way we are we are manufacturing, we are creating the, the polymeric uh, nanoparticle. As I mentioned, you know, you need a this is a chemical pathway we utilized for uh, for uh, manufacturing our our polymeric um, nanoparticles, particular nature natural uh, origin polymeric nanoparticles. That we utilized galactomannan, as I mentioned in the, in the previous slide. Here, the galactomannan act as a hydrophilic part, and also for the hydrophobic part, we use a methyl methacrylate, like polymethyl methacrylate. Um, so we, we combine this uh, in, in, in a self assembly it's not like you need you do not need like to perform like a reactions and this is a mechanism i don't want to discuss it i'm not like a, you know familiar in this this mechanisms and all and um, so we we, we utilized uh, the synthetic and natural actually so why is uh, synthetic because here the methyl methacrylate it got like you have pre approved and it's non toxic and compatible and minimal uh, um, inflammatory reactions and low cost actually so the, uh, as i mentioned galactomannan and also low cost so we combine this both and we we created the galactomannan nanoparticles and uh, here this nanoparticles not only in solubility water solubility nanoparticles also plays important role in passive and active targeting actually and particularly in active targeting you know uh, the passive is something different because it's um, uh, but in active targeting recently a lot of research is going on in particular in active targeting for example you know we are, we are, as i mentioned nanoparticles is like is um, uh, nanoparticle surfaces are like more active right so in this case nanoparticles can be functionalized with any sort of ligands as i mentioned before with, uh, which can interact with any receptors so that the, the target based uh, um, so, uh, like uh, uh, like focus is much more possible with with the active targeting and uh, so far i discussed with you know nano approaches like pharmaceutical problems and what are the nature things and right now i'm going to talk about like glucose transporters in cancer as i mentioned you know glucose transporters in cancer and glucose transporters in neurology diseases so first i'm going to focus on glucose transporters in cancer so can you know many tumors and many tumors display high rates of sugar uptake so um so sugar is like you know essential for our physiological nature actually so sugar is performed through sugar transporter proteins you know there are a lot of transporter proteins I, i'm not going to discuss about the, the transporter proteins here because that's a big chapter uh, if you want to discuss about the influx proteins uh, there are a number of glucose transporter proteins located in plasma membrane as you can see in the picture when um, when 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 sugar, you know sugar as i mentioned that many tumors display like higher uptake of sugars actually so when you uh, the the main hypothesis is like when you use the sugar based uh, materials you can you can easily accumulate on on the on the on the tumor site so that you can you can deliver the drugs at the particular site actually this is the this is the main hypothesis of our research and uh, um, so and another case uh, you know there are two different uh, families of transporters actually in, in particular in glucose transporter one is like a sodium glucose trans link transporter which is called as sglt there are a lot of subtypes are there but i'm not going to discuss the, all the subtypes um, which is called as like active transporters 
uh, why is active because uh, sodium ions we, we which needs like a kind of energy like atp production so in this case that way it's, it's like active transporters and facilitated diffusion glucose transport is a passive transporter actually and uh, you know there are as i mentioned like there are different subcategories of glucose transporters like glucose transport 1 2 3 and transporting high affinity of glucose um, etc and um, most of our in vitro experiments um, we focus on patient derived um, soft tissue sarcomas particularly um, uh, the sarcomas you know mostly it it, it, um, it created in i mean it's found in a lymphoid vessels blood vessels and muscles actually particular neuromuscular regions tendons and ligaments particular nerve regions and the main important things we focus on rhabdomyosarcoma and ebbing sarcoma cells actually rhabdomyosarcoma sarcoma cells uh, it, it mostly it occurs in, in children actually but very few uh, adults also uh, they, 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 get, they got affected and also it's it also having sarcoma is like a, it also is, is, is the second uh, largest cause of disease after osteogenic sarcoma and uh, so that that's the reason we focus actually mostly our research focused on cells overexpressive glucose transporters you know the reason is because we use a galactam and like most more, more sugar based um, um, materials uh, nanomaterials as a preliminary study what we did actually we choose um, four different cell types um, uh, as i discussed like a rhabdomyosarcoma cells and having sarcoma cells, uh, two different cells. Uh, and Kakut is like a colon carcinoma because why we used it, it these cells, the particular cells will not express any glucose transporters actually. So uh, we utilize as a, as a control. So as you can see in the picture, the viability picture, so most of the cells, our, uh, we, we, I mean, we expose our galactoman particles um, uh, in, in the concentration of 0.1%. Uh, as you can see, it's it's a more viable actually it's not harmful to the to the any of the cells we tested and further we what we did actually we we, uh, we our experiments we performed with the, with the um, confocal microscopy um uh, with, with the lower magnification uh, in this case what we did like we we conjugated a nanoparticle with the pitsy which, which is like a green color which is one of the, the staining agent uh, in order to track the nanoparticles and the dap is like a, uh, we strained um, a nucleus of the cells with the blue color and phyllidine is like a, a acting filaments we strain with the, with the red color actually as you can see and we expose this nanoparticle the galactam and the nanoparticles into into this um, rhabdomyosarcoma cells uh, as you can see in, in the lower magnification as you can see some particles are are uh, are bound with with, the, with on, on the surface of cells actually still we don't know whether it's particles are inside the cells or outside the cells so further we investigate with the higher magnification as you can see in the higher magnification it clearly shows that particles are really inside and um, it accumulated inside the cells, uh, the glucose uh, exp or, or, or expressing the cells. Uh, further, we investigated with the confocal microscopy, like the Z-stack images, um, because we sometimes, you know, we don't know whether particles are just on the surface or just on the inside, actually. So we, what we did, we did a Z-stack with the with, um, with, um, with, um, ortho images, as you can see. Uh, particles are really inside in, the, in this video it clearly shows that particles are you know it's spreaded even even in the, in the interior places the cells actually so um, and it's, it's, it's a photo of exposures um, and also we repeated the same experiments with with one hover um, with the same kind of nanoparticles same kind of treatment well in this case what happened like we, we found the nanoparticles are, are inside the cells actually um, also we we, we performed with a four degree centigrade because then um, um, you know, as I mentioned, like active and passive. So in order to identify whether the particles are like this, this is active uptake or passive uptake, we, we also analyze with the, with the four degree, like lowest temperatures. Even at the lowest temperature, you can see that some particles are inside the cells. And um, we we repeated the same kind of experiments with the uh, Ewing sarcoma cells for the four hours experiment. And uh, as, as you can see in the picture, it's not like uh, comparable with the previous cell types, but uh, some uh, some particles are, are internalized, but some particles are like accumulated outside the cells, and, uh, as you can see in in, in, in the, and also in the other pictures you can see uh, some some cells are like uh, some particles are really inside, but uh, some some particles are like outside. But these aggregates, uh, particularly uh, only the dying cells, is uh, taken up the cells. Uh, I mean, taken up the particles. So. Um, I also, we, we performed again with the, with the, with the lower temperatures uh, in order to identify the passive or active cell uptakes. And again, the same uh, results we, we, we are trying. The most of the um, uh, particles are outside the cells, it has got accumulated, aggregated actually. 
uh, in, in the in, as you can see in even the higher magnifications and um, you know so far i discussed about the two different cell types and um, uh, two different temperatures we using a confocal microscopy but now we uh, we used a flow cytometry why we used a flow cytometry because um, a confocal is like a qualitative information in order to get the quantitative information because quantitative information is much more needed actually so uh, we uh, we prepared the same samples, uh, same polymeric nanoparticles, and we exposed into the two different cell types, like avian sarcoma cells and rhabdomyosarcoma, patient-derived cells. And as you can see in the table, uh, here we also performed with the two different temperatures, like a four degree and thirty-seven degree, um, as we did for a, for a confocal microscopy. And the avian sarcoma cells in the four degree centigrade, four degree like lower temperatures, is a lesser uh, lesser uptake. You can see only fifteen percent uptake. Um, you can you can able to see. But in case of four hours, uh, at, the, at the higher temperature, the 37 minutes, like a physiological temperature, you can able to see like um, um, almost 98% of cells, it got accumulated, like almost 100% of cells got accumulated the, the nanoparticles. After 20, even after 24 hours at the same temperature, like 37 degrees centigrade, uh, almost all, um, like uh, all the particles, like 100% of the particles got uh, um, uh, accumulated this nanoparticles, like a sugar-based uh, nanoparticles. Uh, we also repeated the same test, uh, same experiments with the rhabdomyosarcoma cells, um, which express the glucose transporters. And same results we, we obtained um, in, in a lower temperatures, like a 36%, only less than 50% of the cells um, got accumulated. But in, in, uh, in a higher temperature, like physiological temperature, we can able to see um, a really higher uptake um, uh, of, of this uh, glucose uh, nanoparticles, actually. So this is the first, um, so afterwards we performed um, uh, in vivo studies and also I don't want to confuse you actually producing, I mean, presenting the in vivo thing. Um, so we also published this paper. So, um, what, what we obtained, like we, we used a pediatric solid tumor using uh, in vivo studies and this particular um, um, uh, particles, it accumulates uh, the, the, the tumor expressing the glucose transport as one actually. So also so the summary is the next summary is like, you know, development of pre-functionalized nanoparticles. So we didn't functionalize any specific way. As I mentioned, uh, our ultimate aim is not functionalizing, but without functionalizing to target the, the specific organs actually. So pre-functionalized nanoparticles and engineering them to self-assemble into a targeted nanoparticles. And uh, we got like uniform cell size of 150 nanometer size and low size distribution actually, because nano is a big problem actually, size distribution. Now, when you are producing a nanoparticles, you get like a, a polydisposity. But in our case, we got like a, exactly like 150 to 160 nanometer size. And another uh, achievement is what we had like successful uptake of particles by cells over expressing the sugar, sugar receptors. And also we got a very good in vivo results, which I'm not going to present at the moment. And I, I'm presenting the next part of my, my presentation, like neurological disorders and biological barriers. Um, you know, uh, Brian also uh, um, plays a very important role. I mean, the, this glucose metabolism plays a very important role in physiology of the brain. So we, we uh, I'm, I'm going to present the second next segment of the presentation. And you know the disorders of the nervous system actually. So I'm I'm, I'm starting from the, some basics. Um, so disorders of nervous system. There are more than 600 neurological disorders actually. The vascular disorders, stroke, ischemic stroke, hemorrhage. Um, uh, it's because of hypertension and a lot of cardiovascular uh, diseases actually. India is leading at this um, uh, this kind of uh, problem. So um, due to the food habits and, and environmental factors and structural disorders like brain or spinal cord injury or, or uh, tumors like brain tumors. Uh, brain tumors not only in, in adult actually, the pediatric like kids tumors actually. That's really devastating tumors. Um, also functional disorders like a migraine, epilepsy, dizziness, you know, these are neurodegenerative disorders. I think most people are, we are working on Alzheimer's disease, Parkinsonism, multiple sclerosis, and these are like motor neuron diseases like amyloid sclerosis, Huntington's. Actually. The main problem is, you know, in order to treat the diseases, um, the drug, your drug molecules should cross the, the brain's own security system is called the brain barrier. The, the sad truth is like mostly 98% of the drug compounds, almost, um, 100% uh, of the macromolecules, like a large molecule, is not crossing the blood-brain barrier. That, that's that's still the neuroscientists we are working on towards how to how to overcome this this issue. Actually, as I mentioned, the blood-brain barrier, uh, which which passes some essential molecules, but at the same time it blocks some harm, ha harmful materials. Actually, this blood-brain barrier is composed of uh, 
five different cell types actually, but mainly three cell types are much, much necessary at, at, um, for, for, for making a, a tight regulations. One is like endothelial cells and astrocytes and pericytes. Actually, these three cells of cell types is much more important along with the, the microglia that I'm going to discuss some part with the microglia also neurons actually it's a biological wires. These, these are all like um, uh, it's a, uh, forms like a neurovascular unit. Actually. This five cell type plays a very important role um, to, to regulate the permeability of the, any, any materials and um, also in, in disease mechanisms actually. And uh, as you know, it, it, this, uh, this blood brain barrier is regulated permeability with many, many unknown details actually. For example, uh, glucose is crossing the blood brain barrier, but same like glucose like molecules is not crossing the blood brain barrier. That's a that's still uh, is mystery behind this actually. Neuroscientists and pharmaceutical scientists are still we are working towards uh, to overcome this, these problems and to to uh, to um, to explore this uh, this particular issue. And uh, still, we don't know like what sort of particles or drugs to be investigated uh, to to um, to cross the blood-brain barrier. And based on this fact, actually, as I mentioned, you know, uh, the particular molecule system is crossing, and uh, like in order to maintain the permeability, like a lot of glucose, ions, and gaseous molecules is crossing the blood-brain barrier. Actually, based on different mechanisms, actually. Uh, the first mechanism is like, you know, a diffusion based mechanism is uh, it's mostly the small molecules are involved, less than 500 kilodalton molecules, hydrophobic molecules involved in that shape. And also paracellular transport and it's, it's, it's happening between these tight junctions, um, cell junctions of the proteins and transport proteins um, uh, is, is another, another way of mechanism actually. Um, this is a receptor mediator transporters. This is a very important in nano based research because many research is going on in particular uh, particular area of research, particularly, you know, uh, as I mentioned, uh, nanoparticles are like, high, it has like the high surface um, uh, active surface function share, you can able to functionalize the nanoparticle with the different different um, targeting molecules. So uh, many researchers, they are, they are um, functionalized with different receptors, different proteins, actually, they are targeting based on the receptors. So, you know, brain has like different, different um, receptors like transferring and lipid receptors and etc. So, and also adsorptive transitors, so like it's, it's adsorption uh, on, the, on the cellular membrane. Um, so this, this, also, there's the efflux transporters, actually. There are, uh, you know, I, I'm talking about glucose. Glucose transporters are like influx transporters, actually. There are a lot of efflux transporters in, 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 in the brain and different parts in our body. That, that's called, shortly called as ABC transporters, which is the main reason for this uh, uh, drug resistance and all. Uh, so, these are the mechanisms, actually, of, of, um, of the, the blood side to brain side. Um, and uh, how this sugar nanocarry is fueling the drug delivery to the brine actually. As I mentioned, you know, uh, brine is like the physiological, um, the, the mecha, most of glucose metabolism is a, the, the essential for the brine physiology. Um, because uh, for example, you know, uh, the, the, the brine is like a really tiny organ, so it covers only 2% of our body, but it consumes like a more than 20% of glucose actually, um, what, what, what our whole body consumes. Uh, so that, that, that's the, so the brain is like a, a main consumer of glucose actually because brain need like a huge uh, um, CNS tissues need like a huge amount of glucose um, uh, consumptions to, 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 to make the physiological actions. And uh, today I'm, I'm, I'm also I'm, I'm discussing like a different cell CNS drug delivery approach actually. Um, this is a, you know the previous conversion approaches like invasive approaches um, um, there are different approaches like intracerebral implants and transient BB reception and interventricular actually. intracerebral just open up the skull and you are keeping actually it, it, it do not need like a, uh, any surface function station but you know uh, you, uh, these, these methods somehow it need like a specialist person like a neurosurgeon actually. Uh, that's why the recently the non-invasive methods is it's it's, um, it's like a booming at the at the moment to, to deliver the drug into the into the brain. There are different methods actually. One is like a chemical methods, biological methods, pro drugs, and drug conjugates. But our approach is to collide drug nanocarriers, which is like in particular the non-invasive. We are focusing on international actually the direct transport of by international route to the brain via olfactory and trigeminal nervous system. As you can see, it, it's the shortest route. Um, why I'm discussing today because um, you know there's a novel infect like coronavirus also spreading to nose to brine actually because some 14 percent of people are affected by by this this um, this um, this route of uh, infections so, uh, that's that, that's why I, I'm also talking about this particular route actually 
and uh, in in uh, in uh, in application wise this this particular route like nose to groin is like a shortest route as i mentioned and also is a non invasive method we can easily target like um, uh, groin um, um, and also it avoids hepatic first pass metabolism because it it do not need to cross many barriers and circumvent the blood brain barrier um, so these are the the main main important things actually the more efficient anaparticus is in the range um, is 100 to 300 nanometers um, also uh, in our case we use the glucose transporters i, I discussed you why we, we use like um, a glucose based nanoparticles um, so that also you know this international is like emerge as a, a new um, approach to to circumvent the 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 blood brain barrier which is like a brain's own security system and to deliver the drug into the central nervous system and um, you know the first slide i mentioned about the the, the nobel prize uh, for the for the nature materials um, natural materials and yeah i'm mentioning the the nobel prize in 2004 was awarded to uh, to unravel the the function the mechanism of olfactory system actually it was awarded to professor richard axelund it's a linda bach um, previously we, we uh, it, it was a big mystery behind the olfactory system actually because how brain represents the external world is not only the central theme but it's a uh, art of physiology psychology and neuroscience uh, olfaction is important beyond telling us how we smell uh, same like vision um, olfaction is much much more important actually how does our sensory system work and how it interact with the outside world actually because you know brain as i mentioned like brain is like a more most compact um, organ it uh, doesn't have any any connection with the outside world actually the only connection uh, through nose so they 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 explored a lot of information so they produced like a very good information so they they got nobel prize in 2004 for this for that uh, very wonderful discovery actually and also in the world fact is the nose to brain like uh, i mentioned like a distant voice is like just nose to brain actually but it's it's not like an easy system it's a most most complicated like tightly packed system of fact region almost no extracellular uh, space why because it it contains like a huge number of cells like a mitral cells granular cells um like a cribriform plate and olfactory receptor neurons you know neurons is like a, it's a jungle actually because it, there are trillions and billions of connections inside our body inside the olfactory systems and um, so uh, it's like a tightly complicated system and most delicate connections actually and another unique features of uh, olfactory neuroepithelium has extraordinary unique characteristics of undergoing continuous turnover like you know these neurons are not stable actually all the time it it uh, regenerations happens in the, in the particular regions actually and the olfactory uh, the neurons lifespan is like 4 to 8 weeks actually so in order to target at this route and you need to you need to consider all these factors actually but one advantage is you know most of the neurons is expressing the glucose transporter actually that that's why i'm i'm discussing all these stories uh, so in our research um, what we did actually uh, to the best of our knowledge uh, none of the works the previous works uh, they isolated the olfactory receptor neurons they performed the experiments on so in order to target the nose to brain um so what we did we isolated the cells from the olfactory regions and also the cortical regions because um many previous research what they did they you know they 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 performed uh, experiment directly to the animals actually but in order to know the mechanism exact mechanism uh, you, uh, so you need to perform the in vitro experiments or like in vitro or x ray experiments so in our case we isolated uh, ex- um, the olfactory receptor neurons and cortical um, primary cortical neurons and uh, we expose uh, the polymeric nanoparticles uh, same like you know as I mentioned like fitzy labeled the polymeric nanoparticle like the galactam and nanoparticles as you can see here um uh, the, the some of the, the neurons sustained with the tubulin actually the red color but these particles were accumulated in um, uh, beta tubulin immune ne- negative uh, cells um, it's not um, accumulated on the, the particular on the neurons actually yeah, uh, same same uh, results we applied with the olfactory receptor neurons and neurons did not take up the particles instead of neurons um, um some other cell types like uh, some some third elements is uh, t- taken up the particles actually so in summary you know primary cultures uh, brain cortical neurons and factors in certain on did not take up the polyphenol nanoparticles we got a conclusion that neurons is not responsible for this particular nanoparticles and then uh, we 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 you know we we got a doubt actually because um, you know as i mentioned neurons also uh, expressing the glucose transporters actually so with our nanoparticles like a glucose nanoparticle it should it should target the neurons actually. but if neurons did not take up the nanoparticles then what we did 
we isolated the the microglia which is like a macrophages which is present in in the, in the cns regions like a brain and also the olfactory regions um uh, so so we purified this microglia and then we exposed this nanoparticles into the microglia which is like a cns macrophages as you can see um this uh, the microglia accumulated huge amount of nanoparticles and in both cases um, the, the particle and olfactory cases it accumulated huge amount of nanoparticles so uh, then further we investigated with, uh, with this um, um, and also the INS expressing this a nitric oxygen this which is like a, you know stress um, uh, marker stress based marker this particular this the, the cell um, accumulated nanoparticle which also producing the kind of stress actually then further we uh, we um, uh, like analyzed using a purified like um, uh, purified microglia which uh, which we isolated from the transgenic mouse um, um, and as you can see in this case um, we labeled the nanoparticles like this glucose nanoparticles uh, with with the, with the red C like this is like a red color label and he specifically uh, labeled this uh, microglia so in all cases microglia uh, taken up the huge amount of nanoparticles but in the neuron cases did not take up the nanoparticles and also what we did we also exposed um, uh, this uh, hydro like galactamine and nanoparticles into, into the um, into the cells actually from the olfactory tissue that, uh, cells what happens after a few hours we got like a lipid droplet from like a microglia it's like a kind of uh, dots kind of thing as you can see here actually so in, before performing the experiments even i don't know about this particular mechanisms and why it's uh, it's dot kind of things so, um, so when we started analyzing, we found this is uh, when we started analyzing using our well, ultrastructural analysis, we found this is a lipid droplets, lipid droplets, lipid droplets, the lipid mechanism is is uh, is a very common for the cancer cells um, and also adipose tissue uh, type cells actually, but it's not common for the any any olfactory glass cells. But uh, we found, you know, it's like lipid droplets, actually, even at the glass cells, actually. This, this lipid droplets is, uh, is, is the main indicator of um, uh, stress and also high level, when the, the lipid droplets forms because of high levels, uh, rose reactive oxygen species and the secretory, uh, I mean, secrete pro informative cytokines, then only the, the lipid droplets forms, actually. Uh, as you can see in this picture, the uh, ultrastructural uh, um, analysis, it shows um, uh, some kind of um, lipid droplets actually this is a structure the white uh, dots is like a structure of the lipid droplets actually this happens after introducing this um, our, our nanoparticles and also uh, we, we, we after this uh, this uh, uh, olfactory tissues we also analyzed uh, the same galactamine we exposed the same galactamine and nanoparticles into, into the, into the self-assembled mini bronze as you can see this particular cell tops um, because in this mini brain contains five different cell types, um, neurons, microglia, and endothelial cells, astrocytes, and et cetera, et cetera. And as you can see in the picture, you know, particular cell types, it's taken up this uh, the particles. It's not all, all other cell types, actually. So, um, and then we found uh, the other, uh, I, I'm not presenting that, that uh, mechanistic things, actually. Um, so then we found this, this primary immune cells microglia are fueled by glycolytic pathway actually not only neurons even the microglia also um, is, is expressing a many uh, like a glucose metabolism glucose pathway and this glucose transport one is highly expressed in particularly the microglia so as as I mentioned in our previous experience um, uh, the the tumor is which expressing the glucose transport one our particles is gone and accumulates actually the same way uh, the microglia cells accumulate um, expressing the glucose transports one actually the same way our particles accumulate in huge way on, on on particular particular cells like of microglia as you can see the further investigation also shows that particularly it bounds with the one particular cell cell type which is called as microglia and also we um uh, we, we performed uh, you know like in order to analyze whether uh, in, in a very deep way we also performed with some some like a like a, a video on as you can see in particularly uh, this um, this our nanoparticles um, the galactamine and nanoparticles is found uh, particularly on the specific cell types actually and so we we concluded that it's uh, it's, uh, it's because of you know the, the glucose transport one is involved in, um, in the particular um, uh, uh, research and also the, the microglia is involved in this uh, in this um, um, as I mentioned, you know, this mini brain contain all these cell types, actually endothelial pericytes, astrocytes, 
none of the cells involved um, in this particular mechanism, but particularly neurons and microglia involved in, the, in our research actually. Um, also, I, I like to show this uh, the video actually because why how the microglia is acting um, because when you are introducing an, any particles, even in in vivo environment, is happening. Uh, you know, when when you are introducing anything, so the microglia is always active actually, so like a never resting um, uh, microglia. I mentioned like a garbage man because it's, it, if any harmful materials enters the brain, it, this microglia gets activated and it it it, um, it chew up this um, this. Um, uh, any harmful materials actually in the same way it also achieve up the nanoparticles actually as you can see you know how is is eating the the, the any debris actually so and, and in other cases you can see is a never resting microglia because all the all the times is monitoring the the brine environment actually this is all like in vitro experiments but i'm i'm the same way it's monitoring your um, uh, olfactory regions like a nose regions and also the brain region actually patients I mean the, the people were affected by neurological disease after after the COVID infections the rest of the people were not affected because of this um, um, the macrophages actually and and also also we further we analyzed uh, uh, with the ultrastructural uh, investigation uh, you know this is exercise but when when any harmful materials goes inside the brain what happens is the microglia uh, Particularly, the astrocytes gets activated, but microglia is the main main activator actually in this case. And microglia always is protecting uh, neurons at that the specialized area of the neurons. As you can see in the ultrastructural um, experiments, um, the microglia this this is a characteristic, characteristic nature of microglia. As you can see, the lipid droplets you can see, and it always uh, it protects the neurons actually. Any 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 materials go and attack the neurons, the microglia comes and targets. Um, uh, comes and eat up the the neurons actually. I mean, eat up the any any materials actually. This is this is a mechanism behind this. And um, uh, so far, I you know we 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 proved that um, um, the the uh, glucose transport is one is involved in particular in microglia cells and glucose transport mechanism. I mean, metabolism is much more necessary in cancer aspects and also in in um, in, uh, in the neurological aspects. And, and our findings reveal that uh, neither olfactory nor forebrain's neurons internalize um, um, galactam and nanoparticles. Conversely, uh, olfactory and cortical microglia phagocytes the galactam and nanoparticles independently of their futures because of uh, the transport is involved in this. And the inherent mechanism, what we found, it's in, in the olfactory regions. Um, a mild injury, um, what happens, mild injury or any any small harmful material enters, the astrocytes become phagocytes and remove fiery materials and produce anti cytokine. But in case of excess injury, for example, in case of uh, COVID um, infections or any viral infections, what happens, the reactive astrocytes, which is present in the brine, it produces pro inflammatory cytokines and it, it activates the microglia in a CNS resident macrophage actually. These are the these are the mechanisms not only for the nanoparticles or anything, even for this um, the novel um, coronavirus. So uh, I, I think I, I, I'm I'm finishing my presentation. So I like to thank um, um, all my my lab people from Technion Israel Institute of Technology, which is called as Mediterranean MIT. Now also I like to thank uh, Teva Pharmaceuticals for funding our um, particularly the nerve to brain transport. Also, I'd like to thank the European Commission. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the hospitals uh, from the Barcelona because they provided the patient-derived cancer cells, uh, having sarcoma and rabbit sarcoma, and also my European, all my European partners. Stay safe and um, thank you all for kind attention and thank you so much for the time, uh, like very good opportunity. And I thank uh, once again I thank the, the, the College of Pharmacy. Thanks, thanks so much. Thank you, sir, for yeah. giving a, thank you, sir, for giving a detailed insight on the role of nature derived sugar based nanoparticles such as galactomannan in the field of cancer and neurological disorders. Thank you so much, sir. Now learn from yesterday, live for today and hope for tomorrow. But the important thing is not to stop questioning. This is a famous quote by Albert Einstein. Now, may I request Mr. Jajra Gopi Sudhir Kumar, sir, to present the questions raised by audience to Dr. Murli Kumar Swami, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I feel privileged to 
take this opportunity for a question and answer session in the present international webinar to nature inspired sugar based multifunctional drug delivery carriers for this the go, uh, the host dr uh, murli kumar swami thank you very much sir for your uh, enlightened now speak so your uh, insightful knowledge you talk explored and enlightened all the participants in use of sugar based polymers as a multifunctional drug delivery carriers in the present webinar sir so during the webinar we have some uh, few clarification from you sir from the the first one is a uh, sir are, the first one is is it glycopolymers preferentially target various cell types and tissues to receptor interaction sir yeah you mean uh, it's not only specific actually okay if you want to target like you know our body is full of uh, mostly in many many parts actually it's, it's full of glucose transporters actually so it's not only it's not only the way actually because this is a one of the way to to target uh, without any any other uh, surface functionalization like you know antibodies and all because you know sometimes surface functionalization is not stable actually inside the body so instead of functionalization you can you can target with with the glucose receptors um, uh, using a glucose based uh, the, the polymers so, yeah thank you sir so one more question sir yeah so is it required any desired conditions for saccharide modified polymers to mediate drug release sir uh actually it's not like you do not need like a spe specialized condition actually for example as i mentioned you know tumors or for example if you're targeting tumors actually tumors you know always say uh, producing a kind of environment actually when when you're targeting uh, your, your your particles go and bind with the tumors and uh, immediately it starts uh, like releasing the drug actually because the tumor environment you know it's like a multi environment like you know lack of oxygen sometimes and also there is an acidic environment so it automatically starts releasing a, your, your, your your drug molecules actually from it but only so, only one thing is what what you need to focus like a sustained release actually that that's our main focus so it should be you know it's not like a immediate release it should be like sustained release um, that's what we need to we need to modify according accordingly the surface fluctuations yeah thank you sir thank you sir uh thank you very much sir sir is there any disadvantages to use the glucose receptor sir disadvantages uh, okay i presented the advantages actually uh, it's not disadvantages actually um, but you know uh, sometimes you not get like a more specificity actually because you need to focus on more specific for example you know as i mentioned uh, i i i i presented one very few transporters actually because that's a big area as mentioned and i don't want to confuse all the audiences uh, uh, the main disadvantage advantage like you know it's not like sometimes it's not focus actually because you know there is a different subcategories like 1 2 3 4 5 so you need to focus on particularly like you know depends on the cell type specific or uh, like organ type specific actually so that that's the only advantage actually like non specificity otherwise it's it's fine to use uh, glucose based a lot of lot of people they are utilizing um, a polysaccharide based uh, uh, approaches for the, for you know for the for the cancer and also blood brain barrier aspect like you know to treat neurological dis disorders so sir yeah sir thank you sir thank you very much sir your presentations enlightened all the participants with the video presentation and live uh, in the experimental uh, results sir thank you very much sir thank you thank you thank you so much sir thank you once again i thank uh, professor kenpal sir dr gopal sir and also uh, dr salu kumari ma'am dr anapurna ma'am and also other faculty senior faculty um, thank you so much for this wonderful uh, opportunity thank you sir Uh, i request the speaker sir to yes. stop, to stop sharing his screen so that we can enable us to put the brochure for the next webinar i think i i stopped already i i it's not um, yes sir thank you sir now i request dr e selva kumari assistant professor department of pharmacognosy to present the report on today's webinar series 
Good afternoon, one and all. I would like to present the webinar series to report on the topic nature inspired sugar based multifunctional drug carrier by an eminent speaker, Dr. Murali Kumarasamy, senior researcher, Technion Israel Institute of Technology, Israel. The total number of registered participants are 400 across three countries globally that include India, Nigeria, and Pakistan. And in India, in the participants are from 15 states and two union territories among 44 colleges. The details of the participants are students 74.6%, professors 3%, associate professors 4.8%, assistant professors 11.6%, and research scholars 2.5%. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, ma'am. Now we are coming to the end of the session. I request Dr. G. Prakash Yogananda, Ashton Professor, Department of Pharmacognosy, to deliver the vote of thanks. A yeah, warm good afternoon to one and all. I am very happy to be here and part of this global pharma e-learning webcast series organized by College of Pharmacy, Mother Teresa Postgraduate and Research Institute of Health Sciences, a government of Puducherry Institution, Puducherry. I am honored and lucky to have the opportunity to give a vote of thanks of this special day. First of all, I would like to express my sincere thanks to our respected Dean Madam, Dr. S. Jayanti, for her constant support and encouragement in organizing this webinar. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for Dr. Murali Kumaraswamy, Senior Researcher, Technion Israel Institute of Technology, Haifa Israel, for his enlightened talk on nature-inspired sugar-based multifunctional drug delivery carrier in the International Web Webinar Series 2. So really, your speech was inspirable to the young minds Pharma buddies and research scientists. In spite of your busy schedule, you have accepted our invitation and completed this great task, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I take nature inspired sugar based multifunctional drug delivery carrier in the international <laughs> The real speech was inspirable to the end mind, pharma buddies and research scientists. I take this ple I take pleasure and enthusiasm to thank our principal, Registrar Academic, HOD, Department of Pharmacognosy, Professor Dr. V. Gopal, sir, a man of inspiration, kind hearted. Actually, this is echoing. Okay. Uh, sir. Sir, sir. Yeah, yeah, half sir. Sorry for the interruption. I take pleasure and enthusiasm to thank our principal, Registrar Academic, HOD Department of Pharmacognosy, Professor Dr. V. Gopal sir, a man of inspiration, kind-hearted, great academician, good orator, workaholic, pillar and supporter, not only for this webinar series, throughout the entire endeavor of College of Pharmacy. Thank you very much, sir. I thank all the HODs, professors, associate professors, assistant professors, demonstrator and lab technicians for their support and blessings. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for the technical team organizing this webinar series. Last, last but not least, I'm also grateful to the international and national registered delegates and participants, active listeners, thought-provoking persons, students, without whom the great success of webinar won't be possible. Once again, thank you one and all, and I wish you all have a safe, stay, stay at home and continue to learn through this kind of e-learning process. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. A gentle reminder to all the participants, the e-certificates will be provided to all the registered participants 
after submission of their feedback form. The link for submission of feedback is attached in the YouTube chat box. Join us for our next webinar on July 17 at 2.30 p.m. on the topic Nanotechnology in Drug Delivery by Dr. Ashok Kumar, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, UCSI University, Malaysia. And the link for registration is also to the next webinar is also given in the YouTube chat box and also the screen. Thank you all and have a very nice day. Thank you.